Okay, Mokai boaters. Um, God, this thing is taking me forever to get done. It took me an entire day to come up with hardware. And I'm still not done. I still got to get a clam shell for this. Had my hand on it at the marine shop today and didn't grab it. Um, you know, Telex cables, they sell a zinc coated hardware. All their hardware is zinc coated. I should have just bought the stuff online. None of it's stainless steel. For a company that makes nothing but stainless cables. Wow, that's just another horrible company that could give a crap about anybody. Um, this is the first fit, and I think they're. Oh, it's about the 10th fit today. I think this is the final uh, setup. I went with a wire rope holder in the hole here and passed through. I had a nice clean hole here and I had a different cover I was using. I put it here. I bought it from Telex or Teleflex. And I was going to try to run two of those. One for the throttle cable and one for the reverse bucket. But as you can see the angle goes up and somehow I thought there would be more flex on the cable and I could pull it down flat because you need to pass through there when you go over center to lock it in either position. At any rate, they're 50 bucks a piece and they didn't work, so I'm going to return those. Uh, so I went to Lowe's and I picked up some wire rope uh, uh, cables and our cable uh, locks, whatever you want to call it. And they seem to lock onto the threads really nice. I'll probably replace them with stainless when I get my hand on them, but all they had was uh, zinc or galvanized. And I still need to put the lock, I still need to take it all apart and put it back together one more time. The safety pin isn't in up here. Yeah, the uh, it's a uh, it works really good though. I look back there, uh, it's fairly easy to move, just a few pounds of pressure going down. It's obviously easier because gravity pulls it down. I can't be in two places at one time, but maybe the camera can be. back up. So the idea is that drops down, it scoops some water, becomes a water break, and then it becomes reverse after the craft stops. At the very least it becomes a water break like a sea do has on it kind of. But, uh, but uh, it's uh, fairly lightweight so I didn't add much weight to it. Uh, this is the original steering cable that I used and I actually had another cable made for it that would work just as good because I have a little extra material in here I could have took about I think it was about eight inches out but uh, I decided to, uh, once I got that cable here today I'm not sure where I put it out right here that uh, I would try to uh, set that up as my throttle cable I know this is a transom through haul cable generally they use a little something lighter on the throttle cables but the, uh but we'll go we'll go big boat marine on everything <clears throat> the, uh, so so I got this hooked up now and oh, somebody wants to see from behind what it looks like the, uh, so I'll flip that down and you can see that too because I haven't looked at it myself and then the idea is as you can see as you pass behind it I don't know like I said, I can't be in two places at one time, so I'll probably be able to see better in the video myself. Um, but I think it's a, I don't see anything that's going to break here. I uh, used a clamshell. Uh, it turns out this is 10 millimeter uh, uh, plastic sheath. So I bought a uh, coax at West Marine. This is a clamshell to pass like your radio uh, coax through the hull and it is uh, goes up to 10 millimeter or 3 8 and uh, it's a nice waterproof pass through and you can crank it down pretty nice and build some friction but it doesn't actually have enough to clamp the to hold the cable because it, it uses a rubber o-ring in there I was gonna see if I could make another it's a, a triangular shaped o-ring I'm not sure exactly what that word would be um, but I'm gonna see if I can't uh, Change the o-ring in there so it gets a nice bite on the, I don't care if I have to put a piece of sandpaper on the o-ring and and uh, leave the sandpaper in there and then crank the nut down on it so it has some bite on it. But i got to build some kind of friction and then I can take these hose clamps off on the inside and the outside because they want to move inside the rubber and with some water it's going to be a little worse. At the very worst the stainless hose clamps will work just fine I'm sure. 
And then uh, you can see it's got a little down angle. We're pulling on it a little bit, but luckily it uh, just slides inside here. And uh, this has enough flex on it to make that happen. And the coolest part of this whole thing, and I'm, I'm just lucky, I guess, is when the handle goes it, over center, but you can see we're over center when we pass right there. That starts to go over center. So it actually should lock it in the down position or up position, so there should be no forces like from the jet pump trying to kick it back up. So I believe once you push the handle all the way down, and you can see it do the little flop, watch it, kind of there it's over center, and then it's up, you see that little pop right there? It truly is locked, it doesn't want to pop out of there. And if you go back and grab the bucket and pull up and down on it, you really can't move it until you take the handle and pop it up right there and come back to the before the over center position. The, uh, I actually thought as I was building this, I was going to have to switch it to this to get a little more leverage because I thought it was going to be heavier, but you can see it's really, it really isn't. It's not going to be an issue. And this holds really, really nice. And I put a couple washers underneath on the bottom side, some 5 16 washers. And uh, then I'm just going to use a little clam, a marine clamshell to hide this ugly hole that I ripped and cut open there. The, uh, and uh, yeah, another piece. Gosh, you know, I thought I was going to get the motor put on the mountain and installed today. And I made three trips to the big city and uh, tired of driving around. Plus it's getting late. Um, I'm happy with this. We'll just have to see how it works. Like I said, I'm not willing to do any much more on it unless it can be tremendous. And I'm happy with whatever's there because it's better than nothing. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll work really well. And from what everybody said on the forums, uh, doing an uh, extension on the jet pump is a uh, futile move. So I'm going to pass that up. Besides, I'm tired of working on this part. Um, I think I got a... Well, I reused this cable, but I did buy a cable to put in there. So depending on what you were doing. One thing you have to keep in mind is I'm going to be a cable short on this machine. Because the motor that I bought, the uh, carburetor doesn't run a choke, so I don't have a choke cable. And I'm sure hoping that that's not going to be an issue running that racing carburetor. Um, I may end up switching back to one of those real big Honda style um, carburetors for one of the uh, those little two barrel ones to to make this motor run but uh, we'll see we'll see I'm sure that uh, they probably I'm not I'm not 100% sure um, since it's been dynoed and stuff I imagine it just fires right up and runs but that's probably at 70 degrees and who knows what's gonna happen when it's you know 30 degrees out I just don't know and uh, if that's the case I'm gonna use the stock manual cable and I don't know where it's laying around here the uh, but the the regular push pull that came from it that uh, was mounted up underneath there. I'll probably just bring it up inside here somewhere and just put it vertically straight up and down. And uh, man, that's just a big F. I hope I don't even need it. And the reason I say that is because I think I bought this from 30 and then like 12 bucks for shipping used on eBay. And then a cable ran about 80 bucks. And then I had got my steering cable that I bought. I should try to keep each one of them separate. Then some hardware, clamshell was like 12 or 18 bucks. The clevis pins and the joints to hook the ends up. I think these were 12 or 14 dollars a piece at West Marine. The, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to do all the pricing on it. You know, these are aircraft from, uh, I believe Weber is the guy's name, I can't remember now. The, uh, but I get a few hundred bucks. I think I'm gonna have, I think I'm gonna push right up to about 10, it's either eight or 10 grand, and I should know the difference on the couple grand. I can't think of what it is. Must be getting up towards 8,000 bucks on this thing. The, uh, but it's almost ready to take out, I'm hoping. The, I just gotta keep plugging along on it. I've got the new hovercraft hull we're putting together for Kurt, and uh, I've got the tank tracks and stuff that I'm building for couple of different vehicles for this winter and what else did I do to this thing it seems like I did something else <laughs> maybe not all right we're already at 10 minutes on this video I'm gonna kick it off I'll do a little quick buzz around here so anybody can see what I did the, oh and I also I have to plug a hole that's down here I started with this down below the geometry is wrong you have to go straight into where uh, 
in the up position you have to be and you can see I'm not quite it's still a little bit down but you need to be virtually straight it just happened that this was the factory pivot point for the sea do and I put one here and I put one here and I put one down here playing with a different with a different de geometry and I just found that uh, this height is about this height and that works perfect and the leverage is just right so if you need to hang something or do something off there just remember you got to go straight and then you got to pivot here you can't be solid of course and uh, but I am happy with it just like the steering is uh, you know you can move it by hand and uh, with no problem at all and the same with my foot steering I mean I can virtually just all oh, it's just perfect nice and smooth no slop and uh, on to the next thing and I guess I'll get the motor bolted in next week and I will uh, oh who knows how slow that'll go I still got a real marine exhaust and this will be my water supply for my new exhaust system and I haven't decided if I'm gonna have the water spray out the end of the exhaust or if I'm gonna have it come through the tubes and then break back out into a single hose again because I was kind of thinking since you're stuck in such a small boat of bringing the water line up here after it comes through the exhaust pipe and the warm water and have it come up here and like spray out on the side here of the boat because I thought it would be really quite neat like if you you're fishing and your cans are in the water you got a cold fish or up and your hands get all scaly and stuff you don't really have any way to wash your hands you and put your hands in the water and whatnot but the uh, I thought if you had to start the boat up and you had that water streaming out of there the uh, you could uh, not only warm your hands but you could wash them it's just a just an idea I have but the, uh, we'll, we'll keep playing it's got a discharge somewhere the uh, okay that's it for tonight have fun boating guys I'll catch up with you oh you guys are all out having fun right now probably watching the lake freeze up out on Lake Michigan